commencement exercises of the Berean Baptist Bible College and Seminary, thanking you for being here and welcoming you in the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. As we begin, let's unite our hearts and look to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, our gracious, loving Heavenly Father, as we come into thy presence, we recognize we stand on holy ground. And we thank thee for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, upon whom our hope and faith is built. It is on that ground of redemption that we stand. We acknowledge <clears throat> thy greatness, thy goodness to us, and we glorify thee. Thou art the high and lifted up one. We worship at thy feet, even this afternoon. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, amongst the gods? There is none. Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, and doing wonders. The wonder of it all is that God would love sinners like us and send his own dear son to be our savior. We thank you for the redemption we have through the blood, the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for Jesus Christ, the one who knew no sin, but was made sin for us, that we may, might be made the righteousness of God in him. And so we thank thee for the imputed righteousness of Christ. We thank thee that he is our propitiation. He took the judgment and wrath that should have been ours and he turned it away. We thank thee by offering a sacrifice that satisfied the Father. We thank thee that he paid it in full. And how we rejoice in a wonderful Savior that we have as we come this afternoon, it is our purpose, it is our prayer, Lord, that Christ would have the preeminence in all things, that Christ may be glorified, that as people leave this place, they leave having a glimpse and being pointed to Christ and to his cross. The people who have come here would leave having met with the man of Calvary. And so, bless, Spirit of God, we pray. Descend upon us, come in thy fullness, come in thy power. Fill this sanctuary with thy presence. And Lord, may it be known that the Lord is in this place. And may people know thy very real and abiding presence, which thou hast promised, where two or three are gathered together in thy name. So, bless, we pray. We pray for every aspect of the service. We pray for the singing, the commencement service, and especially for the ser thy servants who will bring forth thy word. Lord, I pray that thou wilt be pleased to anoint them afresh and give them the liberty in the proclamation of thy word. Grant them the unction from on high. And I pray that they will give to us the message which thou hast delivered to them to deliver to us. And I pray there's one soul without Christ. They will know the Savior before they leave. So bless, we pray. We commit this service to thee, giving thee thanks and praise thee for what thou art going to do, giving thee all the glory, honor, and praise. I do ask all these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. So remain standing. We'll sing that first hymn that we have. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. <clears throat> Savior, like a shepherd, lead us, 
much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us, for our use thy foes prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us thine we are. Blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us thine we are. We are thine, do thou befriend us, be the guardian of our way. Keep thy flock from sin, defend us, seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, oh, hear us when we pray. Thou hast promised to receive Sinful though we be, Thou hast mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse and power to free. Blessed Jesus, early let us turn to Thee. Blessed Jesus, time, Brother Dr. Daniel Victor will come and lead us in prayer. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you, God, for this day and the graduation day, Lord. And whatever we think, Lord, that today we can only say that thank you, Lord. And our hearts are filled with gratitude and thanksgiving that we could able to finish this academic year in a successful way, Lord. It's only by your grace and mercy. Yes, O Lord, as a shepherd, you are leading us in every moment, leading the, the administration, leading the faculty, leading the students, and leading all the people, and leading this institution with all the difficulties. And as we start this program, O Lord, I commit all the preachers into thy hands, we need your word, and we are waiting for that. And I commit the graduates, those who are going to listen to your word, at this time, bless them, O Lord. Prepare their hearts, and they may be encouraged. They may be comforted. They may be led by the Spirit through your word. And I commit each preacher into thy hands. Bless my heart. Bless all of us together. I commit once again this program into thy hands, this graduation program into thy hands. Bless all of us together. Lead us, O Lord, till the end of this program. I commit these things in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. You may be seated.
This time, we will have the welcome and introduction by Dr. Edwin Shelley, the president of the Berrien Baptist Bible College and Seminary. It is with great pleasure that I welcome each one of you to the 60, uh, 62nd graduation of the Berrien Baptist Bible College and Seminary. I thank God for his faithfulness during the past 67 years of the ministry, and especially through the past academic year 2022 and 23. Our theme of the graduation this year is from Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, The Lord thy God, he it is that goeth with thee. These words that Moses gave to Joshua are precious and stole a soul-stirring words. God's divine presence and power is assured. His word is the authority for our ministry. We can move on in the work of the Lord with joyful confidence, rising above every discouraging circumstances. God provides and strengthens us to the work he has called us to do. Remembering the words in Hebrews 13, 13, let us go forth, therefore, unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. My prayer is that the graduates will always remember this promise as they serve the Lord faithfully throughout their lives. We here at Berrien have been very privileged that God has guided this institution throughout its history and has allowed us to show many souls the path of eternal life through our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. I particularly want to praise God for bringing our special guests into our midst today, Dr. David McLevine, Dr. Charles Phelps, Mr. John Conrad, Mr. Michael O'Neill, and Mr. Jeffrey Lefew. Thank you so much for being our honored guests today. I also welcome all the other esteemed guests that have come to share this memorial moment in the life of the students and trust you will receive a blessing from the Lord today. I thank God for the Vice President, Reverend John N. Shelley, and the dedicated faculty, Mrs. Mira, uh, Sarah Shelley, Mrs. Mira Shelley, Dr. Daniel J. Stas, Dr. Sam Harry, Dr. P.G. Jeremiah, Dr. N. Babu, Dr. K.H. Rehe, Dr. Isaac Cullum, Dr. Daniel Victor, Professor Dave Kumar, Dr. Diganta Mochari, Professor Samuel Jabamani, Professor Ravi Chandra, Professor Habik Paul, Prof Professor Kohli, Professor Nimchan Haukip, Professor Yamko Morey, Mrs. Uh, Mr. Sam Charles Daniel, Mrs. Hannah Sam Harry, Sister Sandler, and Sister Rachel. I also want to thank want to make a special mention for our faithful service, for the faithful services of Mr. N. Pushparaj, Mr. N. Divakar, Mr. Bipul, Brother Puya, Brother Raja, Brother Sandeep, Mrs. Savita Samuel, Mrs. Annie Jeremiah, Mrs. Hani Divakar, Mrs. Sophie Rehe, Mrs. Esther Babu, Mrs. Kalavati, Brother Venkatesh, Brother Hudson, Brother Sheshi, Brother Ramesh, and Brother Rajendra. I also thank Sister Randla, Sister Uri, and Sister Uma for their services in the Berrien Montessori Preschool, and Sister Miu Miu, Sister Yaminjala, and Sister Tati, who serve in, at our children's home in Bangalore. Please pray for these children's ministries, which have great impact upon the future generations. The enrollment of the Berrien Baptist Bible College and Seminary for the academic year of 2023 was 274 students, both in person and online. I praise God for the 41 students who will be graduating today and trust that they will faithfully stand for the truth of God's word and boldly proclaim the gospel of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, in our land and around the globe. God also blessed the ministries of the Bible colleges associated with the institution, namely Biblical Baptist Bible College, Chuchanpur, and the Berrien Bible College in Guntur, Andhra Pradesh, Berrien Bible, Col uh, 
Berrien Bible College in Guntur enrolled 85 students for the academic year 2022-23, and 40 students will be graduating today. Berrien Baptist Academy, under the leadership of the Pausiam, the Church and Orphanage in Tamanglong District, Manipur, continues to educate and care for the underprivileged children in this region. The present enrollment in the school is 700 students, for which we are very thankful. The Lord has enabled the institution to plant over 800 churches over the past 67 years of ministries. These churches preach the gospel, preach the Lord Jesus Christ, Him crucified and risen again. Pray God will open doors to plant more churches in the days to come. I'm excited to share about the Berrien Telugu Bible that was completed and printed at the press in Bangalore. Please pray for the translation projects of the Bible in Marathi and Kannada languages. I thank the Almighty God for enabling us to educate children at two schools, at the Jacob Mira Memorial School in Bangalore, Tamil Nadu, and the Jacob Chelly Memorial School, English Medium School in Hubli. My thanks goes to the Bangalore School Principal, Mr. Jos Ashwin Anand, Ms. Phyllis, and to the Hubli School Principal, Mrs. Danama, Mrs. Prabha Avi, Mr. Noel Chelly, as well as all the teachers and staff of both the schools. May the Lord give them wisdom as they impact the next generation for the glory of God. I thank God for all your prayers. I thank God for all the prayers of our partners and supporters worldwide. It is a great privilege for us to serve here at the Berrien Baptist Bible College and Seminary. We serve a wonderful Savior who is faithful, whose presence is with us and protects and provides for us. He has never failed us. Truly, I can say that he is our Jehovah Jireh. This time, we're going to have the valedictory address. We normally select the student from the undergraduate class, and so from the BTH final year, he had the highest uh, grade point average, and so Kotapali Samuel will come and deliver the valedictory address. Mr. President, uh, Vice President, faculty, and fellow students, answer, uh, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, I thank God for giving me this honor to speak at this commencement ceremony. We come from different cultures, backgrounds, and languages, and, ha and have been made one in Christ. We thank God for His grace in saving us and for the opportunity to learn of Him in this also of study. We have experienced many challenges through the instruction, teaching, and guidance received in this Bible college. We, ha we express thanks to our president, Dr. Edwin Chilli, to our vice, vice president, Reverend Johanan Chilli, and to our faculty and staff for making it possible to stay, study here, and now have completed our respective course. We have overcome many challenges and trials, and we shall never forget what this col college has done for us. Many others who are now serving the Lord faithfully, we are proud to have studied Berean, an institution that stands for the word of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. We have learned the importance of personal walk with, with God and the need and joy of Christian fellowship. We are leaving Berean for the next phase of our, our lives and to join the ranks of others who have gone before us to serve the Lord in a dark and needy world. We bid for a farewell to our beloved college and pray that it will be preserved true until the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and remain through the word of God. We say farewell and step forward to confidence, knowing the one who sits upon the throne will hold our hands and lead us in the paths of service and fruitfulness, and we also pray that the Lord will lead and guide the institution till we return. Thank you, beloved Baptist Bible College and Seminary. Thank you, fellow students. 
Thank you parents, friends and loved ones. We place our hands in God's hands and go forward to walk with him and serve him. Faithfully is call it you who will also do it. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 24. Thank you. The motto of the church and Bible college here is what you see on the back. We preach Christ crucified and risen again and we stand by it and believe it and so we've adopted this song as our college anthem as it were and so the choir will come and sing at this time favor us with the special number we preach Christ
It's our privilege to have Dr. David McElveen with us. Uh, he's no stranger to our ministry, a good friend of it, and a great encouragement to us. And so as he comes to deliver the baccalaureate address, uh, it's our prayer that God will speak to our hearts and have a word for each one of us from his words. So Dr. McElveen, you come. Mr. President and Mr. Vice President, the faculty members and graduates and members of the congregation, could I just say it is a very special privilege to be with you on this occasion. Congratulations to the graduates. I know that you have worked very hard to come to this point and you well deserve the recognition that you are about to receive. Also to the faculty members who have contributed uh, to the shaping and to the preparing of your life in the terms of its study, we want to acknowledge their input, their contribution to that ministry. And in the Savior's name, we say thank you to them on your behalf. I wonder, please, would you turn in your Bible to the prophecy of Micah, Micah's prophecy, and we're looking at the chapter 7. Micah's prophecy in chapter 7. Might be a little bit difficult to find. It's not one book that is generally referred to. So we'll just take a moment to let you get to the prophecy of Micah and to chapter 7. Just with your Bible open, let's just take a moment to pray. <clears throat> Father, we're very thankful today that as we come to thy precious word, we come to a word that is divinely inspired, and we therefore pray that thou would teach us to obey the leading of thy gracious Holy Spirit. Hide this human instrument behind the cross. Let no man be seen, save our blessed Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we humbly and we reverently pray. Amen. I'm very conscious as I stand before you this afternoon that we're living in very difficult, in very testing and very challenging times as God's people. Well do we read in the scriptures, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down with great wrath upon you, for he knoweth that he hath but a short time. It is very clear to me that as we approach the end of the age, that the devil will seek every possible opportunity to persecute, to pressurize, and to afflict the Lord's people. And as graduates going out onto the mission field of your own country, I'm very conscious that you also will be targeted by the evil one. If you are a threat to his kingdom, he most certainly will seek to counteract your ministry. And that was so in the life of Micah the prophet. Here in this seventh chapter, we find at the beginning of it that Micah was going through a difficult period in his ministry. There was a time when his ministry was fruitful and abounding. We might well describe it as a time of revival. But that day is now past, and Micah acknowledges that he is now gathering a little by way of spiritual fruit. He says in verse 1, There is no cluster to eat. My soul desired the first ripe fruit. He goes on to say, The good man has perished out of the earth. And in those few words, we get a very clear sense of the challenges that Micah was facing. And I think we can well equate those words to our situation today worldwide. We find that instead of the church expanding, the church is contracting. We are not gathering in the fruit that once we did, and here and there we are so thankful for souls being saved. But those clusters of the first fruit we long for and we pray for. But when there is that contraction of the church, the evil one 
he seeks to gain advantage. And Micah addresses that, and he says in the verse 8 of this chapter, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Micah was very sensitive to the fact that the enemy was looking to gain the advantage. He was wanting to turn this barren situation into a situation for him to gain the minds and the thoughts of the people. But Micah makes this wonderful declaration. He is saying effectively to the enemy, I want you to know uh, that your position is only temporary. You might think now you have the advantage, but I want to say to you, O enemy, rejoice not against me, for though I fall, I shall arise again, and though I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Now, you may not have experienced such in your ministry, but I can certainly say to you that it is more than likely that you will. And I would ask you as graduates to embrace, to adorn yourself with the words of Micah, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. Though I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. And then he comes to verse 9, which is really the text for the baccalaureate address. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. The Lord thy God, he it is who doth go with thee. We could write that across this particular verse. But I want you to notice four things, and I'm just mentioning them very, very briefly. The first is the fellowship of his sufferings, because this text is all about the Lord Jesus Christ. And I fear there is a great tendency today, even in evangelistic circles, uh, to decentralize the name and the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He who has said, I, if I be lifted up, will draw all men unto me. And as you go out into your ministry, I pray that grace will be given to you never to take the attention of the people away from the Lord Jesus Christ. Here is the prophet Micah, and he says, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned. The word indignation is the word for anger. And we could well read this verse, I will bear the anger of the Lord because he has sinned against me. Now let me ask you the question, where was God's anger manifested? And I will say to you most readily, God's anger was manifested on the cross at Calvary. And we learn in Psalm 78, that God makes a way for his anger. So what the prophet here is explaining to us is that I will live by the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will bear the place where the Savior was suffering under the righteous anger of a holy God. Therefore, because I have sinned, I will keep close to the cross. I will keep close to him I will be in fellowship with his sufferings. And of course, that was the prayer of the Apostle Paul to the church when he said that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to the image of his death. As you go forth today, you may never know the indignation that you might have to bear but it will bring you into the fellowship of his sufferings. But then it also leads us to the faithfulness of his supplication. How precious are these words, until he plead my cause. Dear young people, underline that thought. Until he plead my cause. The Bible tells us of Simon Peter, 
when the Lord Jesus Christ spoke to him, he said, Simon, Simon, Satan hath desired to have thee to sift thee as wheat, but I have prayed for thee. And God has given to you a cause today, a cause to honor his name, a cause to uphold his word, a cause to live your life according to his grace and mercy. When David went down to the valley of Elah as a young boy, there was, of course, the great conflict between Goliath, the Philistines, and Israelite. And David asked the very simple question. He said, is there not a cause? Uh, and that day there was a cause. Because as David went forth to fight the mighty giant Goliath, may I make this point to you? It was impossible for Goliath to defeat David. God had said in his word that through the line of David, the Lord Jesus Christ would be manifested. And so this mighty giant could not defeat David because God's word cannot be defeated. Dear young people, the Lord Jesus Christ is pleading your cause. Now, as you leave today, I am pretty certain that many of us will at some point say to you, we'll be praying for you. Now, you must be realistic enough to know that it's not possible for us to pray for so many people who have graduated over these many years. But still we say it, we will pray for you. But let me keep you this in mind. Even if we don't pray for you, the Lord is praying for you. That's the important thing. Until he plead, will plead my cause. What cause are you going out for today? If it's in the center of his will, he will plead that cause for you. What a tremendous friend to have to plead your cause. And then there is the fortification of his sentencing. We learn here in this text, and execute judgment for me. You will be judged. I will be judged. The world loves to judge the child of God. They look for every fault and every flaw and every failure that they possibly can see, and they magnify it out of all proportion. And even sadly, God's own dear children and they look for flaws in the children of God and they seek to bring down others that they might lift up themselves. What, what do we read? We read that he will execute judgment for me. You will be judged in a very harsh, cold, callous, brutal way by some. But can I direct you to the words of the Apostle Paul who said very clearly, but with me, this is to the church at Corinth, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own self, for I know nothing by myself. Yet am I not hereby justified, but he that judges me is the Lord. That's the judgment that is most essential in the believer's life. It's not what man thinks about me. It's what God thinks about me. And I know that as I honor him through his precious word, he will honor me. That's his promise. If the world condemn us, so be it. Martin Luther penned those powerful words what though the world with devils fill should threaten to undo us, I will not fear, for God has willed his truth to triumph through us. The fellowship of his sufferings, the faithfulness of his supplications, the fortification of his sentencing, then finally, the favor of his security. It says there at the end of verse 9, he will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold 
his righteousness. We are secure today because we have received the imputed righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ. The devil looking for something on your life and my life, he does so with earnestness and with determination. But what do we read of our Lord Jesus Christ? The prince of the power cometh, and he findeth nothing in me. And I know that one day, according to this precious book, I will be presented faultless before my Father. Why? Because he has brought me forth to the light, and I shall behold not my righteousness, not my graduation, not my service, not my labors. I shall behold his righteousness. I close with this text of scripture that has been a, a great comfort and strength and support to my own life. The words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Graduates, can I speak to you as he spoke to his people? If ye were of the world, the world would love its own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. Do you get the link? I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore the world hateth you. And because he has chosen us out of the world, he will manifest to you and to me a spiritual duty of care. For he will not fail. He will not forsake you. I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. The Lord thy God, he it is that doth Go with thee. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. McElveen, and I trust the graduates and everyone here will heed the words from God's word. This time, Mr. John Conrad, a friend of the ministry here, will come and pray for the graduates. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Father, before we acknowledge the accomplishments of these graduates, we want to thank you we want to thank you for this institution, for those who came before us that had your vision to raise up this college, for those who labor now in leading and, and um, operating this school. We pray, Lord, that you might bless the leaders and the faculty for their faithfulness to serve you and invest their lives into the lives of these young men and women. It's truly been for them a labor of love. And Lord, we're thankful for these students who you've called into your service. And as we commission them today to go into the harvest, we pray that from this time forth, as they serve you, it too will be a labor of love. And we thank you in Christ's name. Amen. This time, we're going to have the conferring of the degrees by the President, Dr. Edwin Shelley.
that's not the date. Would the students of the Diploma of Theology class kindly stand of the Berrien Baptist Bible College and Seminary? Mr. President, sir, these students of the Diploma of Theology class, being examined by the faculty of the college, have successfully completed their course, and hence I present them to you to confer upon them the degree of the Diploma of Theology. On the recommendation of the faculty and the power bestowed upon me by the board, I now confirm the degree of Diploma of Theology upon the following students. Santosh Kumar R. Aman Rangkol. Son Son Piong. Gamata Nursery. Thank you. You may be seated. Would the students of the Bachelor of Theology class kindly stand? Mr. President, these students of the Bachelor of Theology class, being examined by the faculty of the college, have successfully completed their course, and hence I present them to you to confer the degree of the Bachelor of Theology. On the recommendation of the faculty and the power vested in me by the board, I now confirm the degree of Bachelor of Theology upon the following graduates. Yanam Dinesh Babu. Kotopoli Samuel. Santosh A. Pratipati Rufus. And LT Wansa Leon. Thank you. You may be seated. This year, we'll be having our first graduate in the Bachelor of Christian Music, having been introduced uh, three years ago. And so we are delighted to have our first graduate. And so uh, would you kindly stand, the Bachelor of Christian Music. Mr. President, this student of the Bachelor of Christian Music, being examined by the faculty of the college, has successfully completed his course. And hence, I present him to you to confer the degree of the Bachelor of Christian Music. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and the power vested in me by the board, I now, I now confirm the degree of Bachelor of Christian Music upon the following student. Nelson Inca.
Thank you. You may be seated. For the students of the Master of Divinity from the Berlin Baptist Bible College, Missiology class, kindly stand. Mr. President, these students of the Master of Divinity, Missiology class, being examined by the faculty of the college, have successfully completed their course, and hence I present them to you to confer the degree of the Master of Divinity in Missiology. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and the power vested in me by the board, I now confirm the degree of Master of Divinity in Missiology upon the following students. Ivy Lohe. and the Branjil Daimari. You may be seated. For the students of the Master of Divinity counseling class, kindly stand. Mr. President, these students of the Master of Divinity counseling, being examined by the faculty of the college, have successfully completed their course, and hence I present them to you to confer the degree of the Master of divinity and counseling. On the recommendation of the faculty and the power vested in me by the board, I confirm now the degree of Master of Divinity in Counseling upon the following students. Elias Longpao. Manhao Neong. Jay Stalin, Wari Bam Shankar Maite, and Param Yibe Zaliang. You may be seated. Will the students of the Master of Divinity ministry class kindly stand? Mr. President, these students of the Master of Divinity ministry class, being examined by the faculty of the college, have successfully completed their course, and hence I present them to you to confer the degree of the Master of Divinity in Ministry. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and the power vested in me by the board, now I confirm the degree of Master of Divinity in Ministry upon the following students. Manmohan de Burma. Sanjay Raba. Singamba Thiumai Khoisho Wilson Al Ken Pibo Samartha Pradhan, Pradhan. 
Gomblum Clamson. Jainu Devia. Nella Turi Nella Turi Dan Wesley and Hina Daimari. Thank you. you. May be seated. Would the students of the Master of Divinity Bible Exposition class kindly stand? Mr. President, these students of the Master of Divinity in Bible Exposition, being examined by the faculty of the college, have successfully completed their course, and hence I present them to you to confer the degree of the Master of Divinity in Bible Exposition. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and the power vested in me by the board, I now confirm the degree of Master of Divinity in Exposition upon the following students. Kanti Premanand. Kali Abhishek Goyal. Robin Wanta Hook, Ongoy Dim, Nanning Me Loikor. Ravin Kumar M. Swansi and Leon. C. Ongshit Konyak. Be my debo. Thank you. You may be seated. Will the students of the Master of Theology Bible Exposition class kindly stand? Master of Theology. Okay. Mr. President, these students of the Master of Theology Bible Exposition class being examined by the faculty of the college have successfully completed their course and hence I present them to you to confer the degree of the Master of Theology in Bible Exposition. On the recommendation of the faculty and the power vested in me by the board, I now confirm the degree of Master of Theology in Exposition upon the following students. Johan. Isaac.
Thank you. You may be seated. Will the students of the Master of Theology, Theology class kindly stand? Mr. President, these students of the Master of Theology, Theology class, being examined by the faculty of the college, have successfully completed their course, and hence I present them to you to confer the degree of the Master of Theology in Theology. Upon the recommendation of the faculty and the power vested in me by the board, I now confirm the degree of Master of Theology in Theology upon the following students. Zarne Lin. And Lalpu Hongshin. Thank you. you. may be seated. Would the student of the Master of Theology in Ministry class kindly stand? Mr. President, this student of the Master of Theology in Ministry class, being examined by the faculty of the college, has successfully completed his course, and hence I present him to you to confer the degree of the Master of Theology in Ministry. On the recommendation of the faculty and the power vested in me by the board, I now confirm the degree of Master of Theology in Ministry upon the following student. C. Lian Sangha. Thank you. You may be seated. We thank God for the extension ministry of the Berean Baptist Bible College in the state of Andhra Pradesh in Guntur. It is headed by uh, the principal in charge, Mr. B.S. Moses, and some of the faculty. Just to recognize them, would you kindly stand, you have all those who are teaching there at Guntur? And so these are the men. Thank you for your efforts and uh, once again bringing these students. Thank you. you. May be seated. And so at this time, the students of the uh, Guntur Berin Bible College, DTH, Diploma in Theology, would you kindly stand, please? Mr. President, these students of the Diploma of Theology class being examined by the faculty of the college, have successfully completed their course, and hence I present them to you to confer the degree of the Diploma of Theology. On the recommendation of the faculty and the power vested in me by the board, I now confirm uh, the degree of Diploma in the Theology upon the following students. Prithviraj Boragada. Saujanya Palapu Shruti Palapu Preeti Palapu Salmon Koduru Anand Paul Banka yes. 
సురేష్ అడాప మల్లయ్య పోచిగోల్ల పాచిగోల్ల నాగయ్య ఇందుపల్లి విజయ్ కుమార్ పెడ్డిపాగ అండ్ రవి బాబు మీసాల Thank you. You may be seated. Will the students of the Master of Divinity class, Guntur, kindly stand, please. Mr. President, these students of the Master of Divinity class being examined by the faculty of the college have successfully completed their course, and hence I present them to you to confer the degree of the Master of Divinity uh, course. On the recommendation of the faculty and the power vested in me by the board, I now confirm the Master of Divinity upon the following students. Jacob Thamandru. Anil Kati. J.S. Subarnar Rao Gangavarappu. Bethapudi Pamalayam as Maria Das. Yeah, this is, this degree is conferred on this candidate in absentia. Joseph Babu Banka. Tabitha Rani Pale. Prakash Baditham Meni, Manda Baburav, T.S. Sunita Sri, Nagaveni Sadapalli, Pavitra Sadapalli, Karuna Kumari Adapa. Anil Kumar Chitluri, Martha Priyadeshini Sadepalli, Rajkumari Mandapati, Rajesh Mandapati, <coughs> Ripka Gangaboyna, <coughs> Koti Babu Gangaboyna.
Valen Dipti Padeti. Suresh Gorumachu Mandraju Ramesh Juliet Lydia Put to nursing Rav Arun Kuma Kalepu Amiel Perupogu. Asharani Jyotisri Kopula Sajivan Babu Bhairavarapu Raghu Babu Bandela and Lassal Babu Bairavarapu. Thank you. You may be seated. We want to congratulate all the graduates. A job well done. May the Lord use you mightily as you go forth into his vineyard. And this time, the graduating class will favor us with a special number.
Thank you, graduates. It's once again our privilege and our joy to have with us Dr. Charles Phelps, a pastor at the Colonial Hills Baptist Church, which is our home church there, and we thank God for his encouragement and his help here for the ministry and how they've stood by us, and we want to thank God for that. And so he will now come and deliver the charge. It has been a great blessing to watch each of you graduate. Congratulations on your attainment. We trust that God's blessings will be yours as you learn, use what you've learned for his glory. We thank the Lord for the administration of the school, for Johanan and Edwin, for their leadership, as well as each faculty member who sits behind me today. Often those who seem least likely to succeed are those that God is most likely to use. Fanny Crosby was blinded by a doctor who gave bad medical advice. She had no eyesight physically, but she had deep spiritual sight, and she used that sight for the Lord to write more than 4,000 poems. We sing many of her poems. We sing, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. We sing, Jesus, keep me near the cross. There, a precious fountain. We sing to God be the glory, great things he hath done. We sing the songs of a blind poetess, one who seemed least likely to succeed, but one that the Lord has used mightily. D.L. Moody, his father died when he was only four years of age, leaving his mother in great poverty Unable to care for her children, she sent Dwight Moody away from the home to work on a farm to send back money. He had no opportunity for a formal education. He had less education than you have. But God stirred his heart and he began to preach. People would come to hear him preach just to listen to how funny he talked. But God used the message of D.L. Moody to stir two continents. It's estimated that he preached over 10 million people without a radio, without a television, that over 1 million people came to trust Jesus Christ as Savior. He came from a very humble home, but God used him mightily. You see, God loves to use those who seem to be the least likely to succeed because God wants to receive the glory from those that he trusts to do his will. This truth is perhaps nowhere most evident than it is in the life of Moses. Moses was born into slavery. Moses was reared by nobility. Moses fell into great shame when he killed an Egyptian man. Moses spent 40 years in the desert. And there in the desert, God spoke to Moses in a fiery bush. In Exodus chapter 3 and verse 10, God said, Come now, therefore, and I will send thee. God knew all about Moses. God had assigned Moses to study under Dr. Nobility. Moses failed in his study under Dr. Nobility there in Egypt, so God sent him to study under Dr. Poverty. Moses studied under Dr. Poverty, and he also learned from Dr. Humility. Moses had advanced training under Dr. Adversity. He furthered his education under Dr. Time. Moses studied deeply under Dr. Loneliness. And now Moses was ready to be greatly used of God. And God called him. And God commissioned him. The people of God were in slavery in Egypt. God needed a champion to lead them forth into freedom. No one would expect that that champion would be Moses. You see, often those who seem least likely to succeed are those that God most mightily uses. In Exodus chapter 3, Moses argues with God. God says, go. 
And Moses says, no. Moses says, I am not worthy. In Exodus 3 and verse 11, Moses says, Who am I that I should go to, bring, go to Pharaoh to bring Israel out of Egypt? Most of us would agree with what Moses was arguing. Who is Moses? He had run away from Egypt in shame. He had become a nomad in the wilderness, watching a few sheep. Who was Moses? He'd written no books. He was 80 years old. He'd hold, held no great offices. He'd been in the backside of the wilderness, if you will. Moses was a very unlikely hero at the age of 80. But Moses was called by a very great God. God says in Exodus 3 and verse 12, Moses, I will be with you. God's presence gives God's people the power to do God's will. Billy Sunday was such a man. Billy Sunday was a baseball player. He had no great education. He studied under Dr. Alcohol. <laughs> Dr. Alcohol caused him to succeed in becoming a drunk, but to fail as a baseball player, until he trusted Jesus Christ as Savior, no one would have ever expected that Billy Sunday could be used of God. But God called him, and God empowered him. God gave him the opportunity to preach to 100 million people. Never underestimate what God can do when you allow God to use you. Moses argued with God, in Exodus 3 and verse 13, he said, I'm not ready. In verse 13, he says, who will I say sent me? Moses does not yet know the most basic thing. He doesn't even know to introduce himself as the servant of God. Whom will I say sent me? I'm not ready. And God says in verse 14, I am that I am. Moses was 80 years of age and as yet could not tell people that it was God who was sending him. Moses had been 40 years in the wilderness. He had studied under adversity and loneliness. He had studied under humility for 40 years. That's 14,000 days. And he still did not feel ready to go when God called. If you don't feel ready today to do what God has called you to do, you're not alone. Moses didn't feel ready either. But go, Moses heard God say, go. When God said to Jeremiah, I want to use you, Jeremiah said, but I am a child. God said, Jeremiah, say not, I am a child. God has given you the sword of the Spirit. God has given you the promise that he'll supply all of your needs. God has given to you the promise that he'll be with you even unto the end of the age. God has given to you the promise that you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. Don't say I'm not prepared. God has prepared you with everything necessary for you to do exactly what he's called you to do. Peter didn't feel prepared on the day of Pentecost. He had denied Jesus three times. But God used Peter for the salvation of 3,000 souls. Peter didn't feel prepared in Acts chapter 4 when he stood before the wise men of Israel, the religious leaders of his day, and they didn't think he was prepared either. They said, surely this is an ignorant man. But he has been with Jesus. And in Acts chapter 4, Peter preaches and 5,000 more people come to Christ his Savior. Don't you dare say, I'm not ready. God has given you everything you need to accomplish his will. But Moses said in chapter 4 and verse 1, I'm not sure. I have no confidence. He says, they'll not believe me. And God says to Moses, Moses, what's that in your hand? And Moses says, it's a rod. And God says, take that rod and throw it on the ground, and that rod becomes a serpent. 
He's wanting to teach Moses that the things that seem impossible to man are possible to God. This school was established 67 years ago and no one thought it would be possible. And now thousands of graduates have gone with the gospel throughout India and Myanmar and Nepal and to the uttermost parts of the earth. God gives you what you need to accomplish his will. Moses says in chapter 4 and verse 10, but God, I'm not able. Moses says, I'm slow of speech. And God says, Moses, who made your mouth? God has given you everything you need to serve him. Everything. Even adversity. Even what some people would say would be incapacity. Even what some people would say would be disability. John Bunyan was such a man. John Bunyan sold rags to make the money he needed to buy his food. John Bunyan bent tin into shapes and sold it to people to provide for his family. And then John Bunyan trusted Jesus as Savior. And he began to preach about the greatness of Jesus and the greatness of our salvation. And they put John Bunyan into jail. He would spend nine years in jail. John Bunyan had less education than you have. And John Bunyan sat in that jail and he wrote a book called Pilgrim's Progress. There are only four books in all of the world that have been more widely translated than the Pilgrim's Progress, written by a poor man who spent many years in jail. But God gave him all he needed for God to use him for God's glory. And God has given you all that you need for God to use you for his glory. Today, God is sending you out. You're being released as graduates. Some will come back and perhaps study further. But you all should know that God has given you all that you need to provide for the doing of his will. He's given to you the spirit of God to make you mighty, the word of God to help you to be messengers of truth, the commission of God to go into all the world, and the power of God to provide for all of your needs. There are some who sit here today who say, I'm not worthy. Moses said that. There are some who say, I'm not ready. <laughs> Moses said that. There are some who say, I'm not sure. Moses said that. And there are some who say, I'm not able. Moses said that. But Jesus Christ says, I am with you always. Even unto the end of the age, and when he's with us, we can do all things through Christ. And because he is with us, we can say that the Lord thy God, he it is that goeth with thee. May God help you not to say no. May God help you to say, I go. Thank you, Dr. Phelps. I trust all the graduates will take that to heart and realize that God can use you as you surrender your life into his hands. At this time, we have some presentation of awards, and I'll call upon Dr. Edwin Shelley at this time. Every year we remember those who have labored and gone before us, and so in remembrance of them, we give awards to some of the needy students that are here. And so I call upon uh, Mira and Sarah and Joe to come up and to give these awards. And so for the Jacob Shelley Award for Academics, we have Ivy Lohi. For Mrs. Patricia Ironside, award for music is Susan Cyan Lyon. <laughs> 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 
Mrs. Mira Chelly Award for Needy Students is T.H. Rojesh. And Dr. A.T. Ironside Award for Willing Worker, Sanjoy, Sanjoy Raba. We have a few gifts to give our guests for coming and being with us here, which I would like the ladies to give. Brother Michael and Brother Jeff, would you come for us? We appreciate them for taking time to come, and so we want to just say thank you for your presence and being with us and in fellowship. Thank you. And uh, there's John Conrad and Dr. Phelps. This time we want to make a few announcements. Uh, first of all, we want to, those of you are in town, you are in Bangalore, you don't have a church home, we would invite you to come and worship with us every Lord's Day. Our worship service begins at 9.30 a.m. and then our evening services at 6 p.m. We do have Bible study on Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock. And so we'd invite you to come if you have young people. We've got a youth program on Saturday at 4 o'clock, and then the teens meet at 4.30. And so we'd like to extend that invitation to those who live in the city and uh, uh, to find a church home to come and worship with us. We'd love to have you. After the service also, uh, there will be a dinner that will be provided, snacks and, uh, there, and so I trust you'll uh, partake of that and uh, then leave. And for the graduates, I know you will love to take pictures and uh, you will love to greet everybody, but we want to tell you once we go out in five minutes we want you to come back in, all right? We want to take a group picture right here and after that you have all night to take pictures, all right? <laughs> So we won't stop you. So, but please come quickly, and uh, we want to get the group picture here, and uh, uh, get it all together. And so, don't be missing. All right, we'll try to call you. Don't take off your gowns yet. Uh, this is the only time you can wear it. All right, so wear it as long as you can. And so, don't take them off. But as soon as you meet everybody, just come straight in. After that, you can meet them and uh, have all the fun and fellowship you want to. After the service, of course, this e today, the college will close for this academic year, 22-23, uh, uh, and will reopen July 3rd. That's a Monday. Monday, July 3rd, the college will reopen for the academic year uh, 20. 23, 24, and so let's pray the Lord will give us uh, a good year ahead. And for those who are visiting, uh, you can always go online and see the courses that are being offered. And uh, to know, some may want to know also that we are recognized 
by the uh, Asian Theological Association have accredited us, as well as we have the recognition uh, from Bob Jones University in the United States and a few other colleges, Bible colleges there, have recognized us. And so you're more than welcome to come back. We have all the way from a diploma to a bachelor's, a master of divinity, and then, of course, the master of theology and doctorate, PhD level as well. These are the courses that are offered here, and we'd love to have you be part of that. Some of our higher level courses, of course, are taught by a faculty from abroad and other places, and so that brings in the diversity we'd like to have here in the ministry. And so, if you could keep that in mind, if you have any questions, kindly see us, or you can go online and check the website. All the information is there, and you can even apply. And so July 3rd is when we reopen. Just one slight change uh, to our bachelor's level is that uh, starting in July, it's going to be a four-year program and not a three-year to be in conformity with the government of India standards for bachelor uh, level uh, degrees. Now they've changed it from three to four, and so to conform with that, and also uh, to conform with the Western world when people want to go to the United States or UK or Australia, uh, many times they're looking for four-year bachelor degree, and so we will be offering that instead of just a three-year uh, bachelor, so it'll be a four-year, which would be actually very beneficial to the student. We're not cramming everything. We're able to teach uh, with my time and clarity. And so I trust you'll pray for that and also uh, bring in many students. We want to ask that you do so. And so July 3rd is when uh, we will reopen for the next academic year. We want to thank each one of you for being here this evening and participating in this uh, 60-second uh, graduation and commencement exercise. And your presence here has been a blessing to us. And we want to invite you to come back and also want to say to you, if you do not know Christ as your own personal Savior, you've heard the Word of God today, and I trust that you will know the Lord Jesus Christ because to know him is to know life, to have your sins forgiven and know uh, the blessing of forgiven sins and the blessing of heaven. <coughs> I trust if you do not know Christ as your personal Savior that you will talk to one of us here and we'd love to show you from the scriptures how you can come to know Christ as your own personal Savior who came and gave himself to die on the cross for your sins and mine, shed his own precious blood to forgive us. And I trust uh, that you will come to know him, and that will be the best thing, and that will be the greatest blessing you can take out of this whole uh, service. If you do not Christ, believe in your heart, ask him, and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Come into my heart. Save me. Make me your child. And I trust you'll do that. Thank you for coming. And as we close, we'll all stand and sing the second hymn, Make Me a Blessing.
Edwin will come and close us in prayer and with the benediction. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for Your faithfulness, for Your tender mercies. Lord, the mercies of the Lord are new every morning. Great is Thy faithfulness. Oh Lord, we thank You that You have been a faithful God to this ministry who hath not failed us for 67 years. O Lord, we thank you for your love, your mercy, your kindness. We thank you, O God, that you have provided every need and you have undertaken for us in every way, that you have protected your work. O Lord, and through these doors, many, many young men and women have gone and are laboring in the harvest field. We pray, O oh God, as these new graduates go out, we pray, O oh God, that Thou would fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit of God, with all wisdom, knowledge, and skills, and understanding. Lord, that they will be instruments and vessels of honor fit for the Master's use. Lord, that they will be used of Thee in this land. Lord, that they will have boldness and courage to take a stand for Christ. And, O oh Lord, to proclaim your glorious gospel without being ashamed. O oh Lord, that they will be willing to lay their lives for the Savior. And so we, O oh God, commit them to thee. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the Heavenly Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.